This week we're going to teach you about equalization or EQ. Mastery of the use of this tool is definitely the difference between sounding good and sounding bad. Welcome to From Classical to Radical. This is a parametric EQ here. This is a, a, a plug-in on Logic Express. And there are three different types of filters in this parametric EQ. There's a roll-off, there's a shelf, and there's a band filter. And we're going to talk about what each one of those are. So parametric EQs have up to three controls for each filter. There is, of course, an amplitude control. Um, and that tells you how much you're boosting or cutting. There is a frequency control, which tells us which frequency we're boosting or cutting. And there is a bandwidth control, or um, Q. Q is actually the inverse of bandwidth, but we'll, we'll just sort of refer to, to uh, bandwidth or Q. And that determines how narrow or wide of a frequency band we're cutting or boosting. Some parametric EQs will have a high and a low band that are a fixed frequency. These are all adjustable, but a lot of times on a soundboard, you'll see in your channel strip there will be low and high, and then there's a high mid and a low mid. So the low and high are fixed frequency. The designer of that board has decided this is the, the frequency I want to boost or cut. Generally, those are shelf filters. And the way they work, and we'll click on this shelf filter here, is that you've picked a frequency. Uh, in this case, it's 75 hertz. And if we boost that frequency, see how it sort of creates a shelf here? If I move it over, um, we'll get to see this. Uh, there's a shelf here that's created. That's a shelf filter. If I cut that, I can get a I can get a shelf cut as well. There's that. So there's a shelf cut and a shelf boost. So that's that's how that works. The same thing on the high end. We can get a, uh, a high end shelf, high end low cut shelf. Also, a lot of EQs will have some mid-range filters that uh, we'll call sweepable. Okay, and that means sweepable means that you can change the frequency that is being affected. This is a sweepable filter here. We'll turn this on. We can increase the amplitude, and then we can move that thing down in frequency, or we can move it up. We're sweeping it from left to right. Okay, see how that's working? So that is a sweepable filter. As far as bandwidth or Q, the important thing to understand, we won't get into the physics, but the important thing to understand that all this is done with filters. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna increase the Q here, which means decrease the bandwidth. Now our, our boost is getting very, very sharp. Or I can pull down the Q, which increases bandwidth, and my boost is getting very wide. So that's what parametric uh, EQs can do. They're very, very powerful. This one has seven bands. Um, I've got two roll-offs, two shelves, and then four um, sweepable filters. So I can pull those up or down. I can control uh, the frequency, I can control the gain, and I can control the bandwidth. Now, as a feature in many parametric equalizers, you will have a roll-off function. And those usually present as either high-pass or low-pass filters. A high pass may also be called a low cut filter. It's called high pass because it allows the high frequencies to pass through. Because of how these work, you don't get a brick wall. Um, we're going to show you this is a high pass filter that is now run up to 87 hertz. And it is the slope is 24 decibels per octave. I can decrease that slope, making it a, a gentler roll off, or I can increase the slope, pushing it harder or closer to a sort of a brick wall cutoff. This 24 dB per octave is pretty good because you don't generally like feel stuff falling off uh, as you're coming down the frequency range. So that is a high pass filter and we can do the same thing on the other end. We can get a low pass filter which allows us to start cutting everything that's above a certain frequency here. Um, those are very useful and uh, we'll talk about those in a second. As an aside here from a guy who's also a sound engineer, I recommend putting a high pass filter on everything. I put a high pass on the kick drum, I put a high pass on the bass. Now I run those down pretty low, 
but there are all kinds of subsonic frequencies that get generated. It could be, um, it could be a five hertz signal that's being generated just from sort of a, a harmonic that's in that kick drum head. Okay, you can't hear five hertz. I can't hear five hertz. My speakers can't reproduce five hertz. But this sucks a lot of energy out of my amps attempting to reproduce that five hertz sound. Um, there are, we talked about the low C on your violin is 130 hertz. Really anything below that, there's not any useful information coming out of your violin below 100, and, you know, say 100 hertz. Anything that's below that is just going to be, it's an artifact and you're going you're gonna to get a bunch of mud when your sound system tries to reproduce that. So I put a high pass on everything. There, there are some guys that even put a high pass on their mains. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily go that far. But if you've got access to a high pass filter, I highly recommend that. I actually run my high pass at between 150 to 170 hertz. And the reason for that, even though my low C is 130, is because that C string is so much massier than the E string, it tends to be louder. So as you see, if I run that up to 100, uh, 150 hertz, 170 hertz here, I haven't cut everything in that 130 hertz range. I've just cut, you know, 5 to 10 dB in that range. And that's enough to sort of bring your C string in line with what your other strings are doing. And it gets rid of all this just garbage that's going to be coming down here. And we'll see some of that in a minute. There is another kind of EQ called a graphic EQ. And we'll put up a picture of that of a graphic equalizer here. A graphic EQ, you'll see, has a bunch of different sliders. There's one for each band. Um, they're generally described by how many bands there are. A 31 band EQ is very common. You see a lot of those in sound systems. Um, most of your EQ pedals will be a seven band EQ pedal. They'll have a frequency listed for each slider. And it's important to remember that they don't notch just that frequency. They work the same way that, that these filters do. There will be a specific um, frequency band and it's going to pull down if you decide to pull that slider down. This is what it does to that frequency range. It doesn't just pull down, in this case 680 hertz, it's also it's pulling down from 200 to 2k. Now the more bands that you have the tighter they make the cue in each band. So if you've got a seven band EQ, uh, you might see this much overlap between um, faders. So if I pull down the one next to it, um, pull down the one next to it, I'm going to see this type of effect. See, so I actually am losing, just because I've got two faders pulled down, I actually lose a whole bit of this um, that's what a, a seven band EQ with two adjacent faders pulled down may look like, what the, what the uh, frequency pass rate may look like. Like I said, just with parametric EQs, these are filters and they have a bandwidth. So the 400 hertz slider easily cuts a swath from two to 600 and maybe more. Um, the more faders you have, the tighter the bandwidth. And that's why a 31 band EQ is usually found on a main PA or a monitor because they're a lot more surgical. Um, the Q is tighter on each fader. If there's a little bit of feedback, the engineer can find which frequency is feeding back and he can notch that frequency without taking out this wide swath of sound from your overall uh, product. This is a pure sine wave at 440 hertz. This is what a sine wave sounds like. Okay, so you can hear that. We're actually going to open up the EQ and we're going to see this is what a sine wave looks like on an RTA. It's just one little spike right here at 400, okay? So I also recorded an open A on my acoustic violin, and we will open up an RTA to see what that looks like. Um, let's play that. Now you can see here's the fundamental frequency at 440 hertz, but there are also all these other peaks that come after that. Notice they get closer together as we go up. These are all the harmonics that are generated. When you move a string, that string does move at 440 hertz. But because it's not perfect, it's not mathematically perfect, and it's being continuously drawn by a bow, you also get the higher harmonics. So you get 440 hertz, but you'll also get some stuff 
at 880. You all get some stuff. You also get some stuff at 1760. You also get some stuff each octave higher than that. And then there are artifacts that come from just the, the sound that the bridge puts into the instrument. The bridge is going to have a resonant frequency. The violin body is going to have some resonant frequencies. The other strings are actually vibrating a little bit along. So you're going to see a lot of different frequencies in there. We'll look at here again. See all these different frequencies that are present in just that one note. And then you also know when I change bow direction, look what happens here on the bottom end. There's all this low frequency stuff that gets generated. You don't really hear it much, but your amplifier is going to try to reproduce that. And that's why we use this, this high frequency, um, the high pass filter. We're actually going to run that up quite a bit. You're probably not going to hear much difference, but you're going to notice here that it's cut all that out. So when I change bow direction, you lose all that stuff that was down here. There's, there's no more just garbage down here. Watch. See all that? You don't really hear much of a difference, but it does clean up your mix quite a bit, believe me. Now, I've recorded, I've recorded some, some other stuff with me playing a little bit here, and we're going to open up an RTA and look at that. This is what's going to happen when you just have a violin playing. And just sort of watch this a little bit and listen. You're going to see all the frequencies that happen when a violin's playing. So we're going to put in this high pass filter. Maybe we'll experiment a little bit. So you can hear what happens to the sound as we move that filter through. That's what some cuts are going to sound like, and here's what some boosts are going to sound like. So you see how much power, how much control we have over the sound of the violin. If I've got access to four of these filters here that I can boost and cut various frequencies, we, we really have a lot of control how much we can really tweak the sound of that instrument. So how do we use EQ? The conventional wisdom from engineers is that you cut broadly and you boost sharply. And what that means is if I need more of a specific frequency range, if I'm trying to get more definition, or I'm trying to get more presence, I will boost in a, in a fairly tight cue, a fairly tight bandwidth. I will boost a rather specific frequency to try to get that sound. Okay, I don't generally boost all the highs. Again, rules are made to be broken, but this is, this is sort of the conventional wisdom. I will cut broadly. If I feel like there's too much mud, then I'm going to get into that mud area and I'm going to pull a whole lot of that down. I'm going to cut very broadly in my EQ and you'll see that in the RTA. So I boost sharply and I cut broadly. That's just that's sort of an idea for engineers because we've got a lot of instruments to sort of fit into this mix. And um, if I'm boosting broadly, then I just have a lot of things that are fighting for space. Uh, so we don't mind cutting at all. Okay, but boosting we try to do pretty specifically for the uh, for the task. We also tend not to try to boost or cut anything more than I don't know five to eight dB under normal circumstances. 
if you find yourself working a lot harder than that, if you've got like a 20 dB cut or a 15 dB boost problem, you may have a source problem, not an EQ problem. It may be that your source is sort of jacked, or it could be that you're in a room that's sort of jacked. It could be a room that just is really hot in a very certain frequency, and, and you've got you've to really cut hard around that frequency. But as a general rule, we tend not to try to cut or boost too terribly much. Um, if I'm doing a lot of cutting and boosting, I, I want to take a look at my source and make sure I've got a good source. In general, with a rock band, we like to see an EQ that looks like this. It sort of starts out flat as it's going across, and when you get to about 1 or 2K, it starts to slope down a little bit. Okay, This above 1 or 2K is where we start to feel um, perceived loudness. Okay, You can push... 50 hertz, 80 hertz, 100 hertz, you can push those pretty hard before people start to feel uncomfortable. But if you're starting to push 4K, 6K, 8K real hard, that hurts. And so we can get a mix louder if we'll sort of roll it off starting at about 1 or 2K. And you can start to feel that rattle in your chest and that push and that pressure that really makes you feel good at a concert. And it's not cutting your, it's not cutting your ears and it's not peeling your hair back. So that's sort of what we like to see, sort of flat up to about 1 or 2K and then sort of a general roll off after that. You still need those frequencies above 1 or 2 because that's where clarity, definition, and air are, but they really do get painful if you push them too hard. So as you're trying to figure out what sonic space you need to occupy as a violin player in your group, you can use the RTA on your phone. There's, our, there's a bunch of free RTA apps out there. Um, but you also want to use your ears. You want to sort of train your ears maybe with that RTA app to hear what all these different frequencies are. And then you can boost or cut the frequencies that matter most to you. Like anything else, you're going to have to experiment to get the sound you want. But I hope this lesson has equipped you with enough understanding about what EQ is and how it works to help you be effective in your quest. Be sure to click the subscribe button so that you can be notified every time we put up a new video. And we look forward to seeing you guys next week.